Hey, Escape with Vitev. We're gonna spend a couple of minutes walking through how to troubleshoot and fix a reverse osmosis system. Um, they're not that difficult once you understand a few things. Uh, they can be kind of intimidating when you just look at this system and all the different cartridges and the connections and, and not sure where to start. And so we're gonna just show you a few little cheats, um, some things that can help you along the way, help you identify the problem, maybe even fix the problem, but if nothing else, have some pretty high fidelity information, some good details to share with the technical support folks, customer service shop, whatever, who can then you know, fix the problem completely by getting you new parts or, or replacing something or whatever they need to do to get the system up and running again. It's not that hard. Most people can handle this if you know a few basic guidelines, and that's what we want to share with you now. All right, so as I said, it doesn't matter the RO system you have, the style, the model number, anything else. This is the Vitev Max system. This is the RO the system that we use. A little bit unique, but um, at the core level, it functions just like every other RO out there. And so I'm going to use it to represent um, and to show you basically what steps to take to troubleshoot your system. Before doing that, just a real quick overview. Um, RO systems are all going to have some sort of what, what's called pre-filtration stage. Um, it's not pre-filtration so much as it is pre-membrane. The membrane is the, the, the heart and soul of an RO system and it, it must be protected. So the sediment cartridge, which is usually your first stage, that's going to take out the big chunks, sand, sediment, rust, whatever that, that may be in your water, so that the membrane doesn't clog up faster than it otherwise will. And then you have another stage, which would be a carbon filter, most likely. Carbon has typically been used to take care of chlorine, uh, get rid of that taste because it'll go through the membrane. More so, you need to use this now, a good high-end carbon to protect from chloramines because chloramines will actually just eat away the membrane to where you might as well not even have this stage in there anymore. So um, once it leaves the membrane, it'll then run down another tube over to your pressurized storage tank. That same tube will bring the water back to the system and then up to the faucet or off to the refrigerator or however you have your output plumbed in. So um, we have a different stage here. We have our last cartridge. This is our mineral cartridge. So we're bringing the alkalinity up, the antioxidant level, you know, or the antioxidant properties, taste, improving that. All that's done here. This is a unique component to our system, but um, we're just going to use this to show you. So fundamentally, there's, a, there's one, one main thing to think about when you go to troubleshooting, and that is start at the furthest point away from the supply line. Wherever your supply is coming in, right next to your pre-filtration stage, um, go to the other side and start there. You want to work your way from upstream to downstream. I'm sorry, make that the other way around. From downstream to upstream. And then you can get an idea of where that volume issue, where that clog, where that restriction is taking place. It doesn't even be good to start here when it may be down there, right? It, it, and I'll show you why that's significant here shortly. But for most ROs, um, you're going to start with the tank because that's the furthest point away from your supply line. And there's three things that can go wrong with the tank. So let me move this out of the way and then we'll talk about the tank specifically. All right, so with the tank, a couple of things you have to understand. First is that this is pressurized. That's why it's called a pressurized external storage tank. Um, but what does that mean? What, what's happening here? So inside of the tank, there is a bladder. Uh, it's like a, a balloon, okay? And that balloon has five to eight PSI, pressure pounds per square inch uh, of pressure on it, right? Um, we need that in there because as this fills up with water, you've got to have enough pressure inside the tank to push the water up and out to your faucet, the fridge, whatever. Um, so it has to be under pressure. Now, if that pressure gets jacked up and it gets messed up for either from the factory or just something weird happens to it, the pressure can change and it needs to be corrected. Um, so a couple of ways to first diagnose that. Number one is you're going to want to drain the tank. You can't check the pressure of the tank or, or diagnose it without the water being gone. So the first thing you want to do is turn your faucet on and let it drain out. Once the faucet's finished, once there's no more water coming out, turn off the valve on the top and disconnect this, the tube that heads into the tank. Take that out and then just wait a few minutes. And what you should see, as long as the RO system is still functioning, the water's turned on there, the faucet's off, is you should see water coming out of that tube. It, it may not come out in a consistent stream. It may spurt out a little bit. It may leak in, in, in kind of chunks and then trickle off a little bit because the membrane is pretty tight. It takes a long time for that water to seep through. And sometimes you'll have a, a pump of some sort on there as well that kind of changes the cycle of the water going out that tube and out the drain line. But what you want to look for is water coming out. If water is going through the entire system and, and not having a problem getting through, then your issue probably is a tank. Um, so that'll be number one, all right? So then you want to turn the water off and set it aside and let's do some diagnostic work on the tank. First thing, um, Remove the cap from the stem down here, all right? This is a stem just like any other tire, your car tire, bicycle tire, whatever. 
Like I said, it needs to have five to eight PSI inside of here. If there's too much pressure in the tank, that's gonna restrict how much water can get in, right? It's not gonna allow as much water to get through as possible, which may mean you, you don't have three gallons of water. You may only have a couple of glasses worth. You may just get a pitcher worth. You're gonna have a lower volume of water than you otherwise would because the system, the PSI of the water coming through the system from your house can't push this, can't compress the balloon inside anymore to force any more water in. And therefore, you get a little bit and it's done. And it has to keep filling up again at that point. So in that situation, you're gonna to wanna to decrease the pressure inside of the tank. And you can do that just by pushing the little stem inside or the little needle inside of the stem there and letting off some of that pressure. Again, you have to do it with the tank empty. The other thing that could be happening is it could have not enough pressure, it could be too low. Maybe you have two pounds in there or something, which means this is filling up with water, but there's not enough push to completely drain it out. It can only push a little bit, and then once the volume comes down, the PSI lessens off inside of the tank, you're not pushing as much water as you otherwise would, which means you need to increase the pressure inside of the tank. That's, that's the second option. The third option may be that uh, you notice no water's coming out, but it's heavy. It's, you can even feel the water sloshing around inside of there. You may even see some water leaking out of the stem here. That's a sign that your bladder is ruptured. Um, and there's no way to fix that. All you can do is get a new tank. Um, that's sort of, you're just stuck there. Um, and those things can happen. Bladders can rupture for a variety of reasons. That can be the issue. So with a tank, too much pressure, you're not gonna have enough water to get into it. Too little pressure, it's not gonna be able to push the water out. And then the third, the bladder being ruptured means you're not gonna get any water, period. This is essentially a bucket with a lid on top. Um, so those are the three things that can go wrong with your tank. If that's not the issue, if you remove this tube and no water came out, well, now we know the tank isn't the issue, at least it's not the only issue. Something else is going on here, so let's talk about the filters now. Okay, so like I said earlier, the principle here of starting further downstream and then working your way back to the source, that's the same way you're gonna diagnose what's going on with your filter cartridges as well. Um, ours is a bit unique in that it has this post-membrane cartridge, you know, our mineral cartridge. Um, some people may have a, a carbon in here as well, that's your polishing filter, whatever. Um, but the idea being start furthest away and work your way back. At this point, the tank should be disconnected. You probably just have a loose tube over here. Um, and so you're just gonna start working your way back. Leave the, the supply on, keep the, the RO system working, um, get a catch basin, get a big, get some containers, uh, some towels, whatever, because as the water, once you find the clog and you figure out where it's at, you're gonna get a pretty good squirt of water most likely that you're gonna wanna clean up. So just get the sink opened up, you know, get everything out of there, prepare for a mess. <laughs> but that's just the way it works. So. Um, how are you going to know where the clog is? You're going to start removing one cartridge at a time. If this is the issue, what you most likely are going to start seeing is a bunch of water coming out of the connector. Not all of them unscrew like ours. You know, some have another housing, some are just twist in. Um, there's different styles out there, but wherever that connection is made, you're probably going to start seeing water come out of here um, at a pretty quick rate, particularly if they're on the front side of the membrane. And you'll get an understanding if that's the cartridge or not. So let's say you remove this one and nothing. There's no water coming out. So this is most likely not where the situation, where the problem is. You go to the membrane, two things you can look for here. You can look for drain, how much water is coming out of your drain line. If you have a lot coming out of here, but nothing coming over to the clean side, then you know this is probably clogged up. It's not, it's not allowing things to pass through. It's sending everything down your drain, at which point you're gonna wanna stop because you're just wasting water. Um, but if you don't have anything coming out of the drain and you have nothing going over to the clean side either, you keep working your way back up. You end up with the carbon filter. You remove this one, nothing's going on. No water coming out. Okay, so it's not this cartridge. And you just keep working. And then most likely what's going to happen is you're going to start to take your pre-filter or your sediment cartridge off, and you'll get a bunch of water squirting out of here. Okay, so now you know this is probably the cartridge that's the problem. Turn off your supply, take this cartridge off, and do one more step. Put the carbon cartridge on in this place. And then turn your water back on, and see if the water flows through here and now comes out of the open hole that's just downstream of it. And if that's the case, well now you have even more, you know, further evidence that this is the problem. You can further solidify that by putting that carbon now, or that, that sediment cartridge on in the second slot here, letting it run through carbon first and then sediment and see what happens. If it clogs up again, you know you have the problem, right? You can kind of interchange the cartridges in the spot to see, to make sure that one that it works fine works okay, the one that doesn't work, you know, even in a different slot, still doesn't work. And all that's gonna do is allow you to figure out what problem or what cartridge needs to be fixed. And at nothing else is gonna give you a lot more information to help with that, you know, the technical support person, if you need to call them and get some help over the phone or 
chat or whatever. So um, that's the biggest thing that we want to recommend. Work back to front. You have a very good understanding of what's going on at that point. Um, there's some simple things like, you know, make sure your valves are turned on all the way, that sort of stuff that, that should be kind of more common sense, but um, obviously check that stuff too. Um, but if it's a filter issue, that's going to be the best way to diagnose it. So hopefully this has helped you. Um, if you have some specific questions to your situation, you can comment. Our contact info is down there as well. Even if you don't have a Vitev system, you're just having some problems and not getting much help, give us a ring. We're happy to help you from that point. Um, that's what we're here for. We're helping trying to help people enjoy the water that they've chosen for their home and have the best experience possible. And the last comment amongst all of this is no RO system is going to work for the life of the system perfectly. Most people have some sort of issue with a flaw in a, in a filter or with something going on in the source water. Um, source water is continually changing. The, the parameters that it's coming into your, your house with are constantly in flux. And so the RO system is going to work a little differently based on the, on the source water. So just be aware of that. Um, this is not an easy thing to... Um, these aren't simple systems, right? And you really, the, the whole point of an RO is to take everything out of the water, which then the negative side of that is there's sometimes some challenges you have to deal with when it comes to clogs and maintenance and that sort of stuff. But when they work, they work really, really well. So that's it. Hope this helps. If you have some questions, let us know, and we'll look forward to talking to you soon.